I don't know if thumbs up actually does anything. I, 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 I see other YouTubers ask for it. I don't really know what it does. I don't know if it actually makes your ranking higher or not. So do thumbs up actually help me? I don't know. If everyone who watches this video likes it, gives me a thumbs up, we'll find out. But um, yeah. yeah, anyway. Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. After my release of my best knives in 2017, a host of you guys reached out and said, hey, what about whetstones? I mean, you do lots of whetstone sharpenings, don't you? I do. <laughs> and uh, I really wish I had done more whetstone videos this year, but I had no idea of, uh, of the amount of uh, partnerships I was gonna get and all the knives that were coming in. So my channel started reviewing whetstones and that's kind of my core. And that still is at my core of what I really want to do. So what I'll do is I'll go through every grit level that I have used in the studio this year. And then I'll tell you guys my best picks and uh, I'll kind of give you guys really brief summaries of every stone. So this is going to be a relatively long video. If you guys don't like that, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, have fun, good luck, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. <laughs> now the Atoma is not a whetstone, but I do use it for the same purposes as these two other stones here. Um, so let's just start with the Atoma. It's very fast cutting. It's very aggressive. It's a stone that you can do a lot of things with. You can flatten stones with it. You can reprofile knives with it. You can thin knives out with it. So overall, a really fantastic piece of equipment. Glass is not a bad stone. It feels really nice. It definitely is coarse, but it's not coarse enough for my liking to be in this category here. This stone, this stone here feels a lot more like a 200 to maybe 240, maybe even a 300 grit stone. And so even though it is rated at 120 mesh or you know roughly 120 grit, um, the feedback in the stone is great. It does its job pretty well in terms of that department. It's very flat and it's also very dense. So I don't see the stone wearing out very quickly here. Uh, it definitely wears out about half the speed or even maybe slower than that than the Shotton Pro 120, which I'll get to next. Um, overall, it's a nice feeling stone, but I just feel like it's not the right grit for this range here. The Shatham Pro 120 is definitely a really nice stone. It's definitely my favorite stone in this category here. Uh, it's very fast cutting. It does load up as you can see here, but the load up doesn't slow down this cutting speed at all. Uh, all of my knives within two passes, most of the time within one pass. Uh, two pass max will develop a burr on both sides. I say that if you want a stone for correcting your knives with, uh, reprofiling your knives, putting a new bevel on your knife, this is probably the best stone for that. So really in this pile here, the best whetstone, you know, uh, coarse whetstone is the 120. But if you wanted a stone that also can flatten whetstones with, the Otoma 140 would be that stone. So one thing to note though, the Shatton Pro does have one drawback and it does wear quite fast. And that's really the only negative I have to say about the stone. If you're using the stone, you really have to know what you're doing. Do not buy the stone just because you want to buy a coarse, you know, an ultra coarse stone to add to your collection only buy it and use it if you really need it don't use it to sharpen your knives with never hop on the stone to start a sharpening process on if you have a very dull knife hop on like a 320 or a 400 or 500 grit stone never hop on a 120 stone to start your sharpening process i only use the 120 and the 140 grit stones for reprofiling thinning and flattening that's it don't do anything else with it uh so or, or fixing chips obviously so unless you have one of those problems, do not hop on any of these stones here. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next grit, which is the 300 grits or so. So uh, we'll start with the Sharp Pebble 400. It's a fine 400 grit stone. It's definitely true to grit, uh, very fast wearing, and it's a soaking stone. So for 20 bucks, it's a fine stone or under 20 bucks. It's a great stone for that, but just be aware, it's a very fast wearing stone. You definitely don't want to use a stone for knives heat treated over a 50, I would say 58. Uh, under 58, 50, you know, 55, 56, 57, fine. As soon as you hit the 58 mark, this stone will definitely just wear out. Um, other than that though, it's a fine stone, great 400 grit stone. If you just wanted something to practice on and to something to kind of, you know, take away some of the rough edges on a knife. The Shopton Pro 320 is a nice stone, again, uh, for a 320 grit stone, definitely true to grit. I would say knives under a 62 Rockwell will definitely work well in this knife. Anything over a 62 will just kind of be a little slow. And the feedback definitely lessens as you go higher on the Rockwell scale. It stays fairly flat if you have a knife that is not too hard. And knives that are too hard, you know, again, heat treated to a 62 and higher, will definitely start to dish and gully this stone here. The Shepton Glass is definitely one of my favorites in this category here. Um, feedback is awesome. The feedback, the hand feel is really nice. Uh, I have really nothing bad to say about this stone here. 
The only thing negative I have to say about a Shatman glass stone, especially the 320 grit stone, is it's only giving you five millimeters of stone. <laughs> so it's not a stone that you want to use uh, or flatten too often. This is the Suhiro 320 Syrax. It is a fantastic stone. Now, they also make a thinner 320 grit stone, but uh, I was sent the brick. <laughs> uh, I like it a lot. It's a soaking stone, uh, very positive feeling. Tactile feedback is awesome. Hand feel, really nice. You know, this class of stone here is not a correcting stone. This is a ultra coarse, or this is a coarse sharpening stone. So if you have a really dull knife that needs to get, uh, you know, polished up and touched up before you put it onto the 1000 grit stone, the 320 grit stone and 400 grit stone is fine. Uh, or are fine for that and so soaking stone wise this is one of the best soaking stones i think in this category here if you want a 320 grit soaking stone the Surex 320 is definitely the best in my personal opinion now this here is the chocero 400 now the chocero 400 is an interesting stone a lot of folks seem to love this stone um, i think it's a decent stone i think that as a chocera you know being in the chocera uh family it there's a lot of high expectations for the stone, especially for me, where one of my you know, two of my favorite stones are the Trucero stones, uh, which we'll get to later in the video. The Fort Trucero stone, I think it's fine. I think that it's a little bit pricey for what they are offering. I think that if you wanted a, you know, a 320, 320 grit to 400 grit stone, the Cerax 320 is a much better value and probably even a better performer, or just as good as a performer as the Trucero. I feel like there is a grain and that I'm going against the grain for some reason. Uh, I know that's an odd thing to say, but as a stone, I think it's a fine cutting stone, definitely very fast, and so I'll give it that. But in terms of hand feel, it just doesn't feel like a great hand feeling stone. I don't have a lot of pleasure sharpening on this stone, and that's kind of what I look for when I'm sharpening on stones. Hand feel, or you know how good the knife feels on the stone, and feedback. Those two things are very important to me. Speed will be the third thing that I look for, because speed usually you know just implies that you have to do an extra one or two passes. So speed is not something I'm too worried about. This stone definitely excels in speed, but it lacks uh, it lacks in hand feel. And the feedback is decent, but again, hand feel is definitely not very good on a Trocero 400. Uh, next one we have here is the Superstone 400 by Naniwa. Now the 400 grit stone, uh, I'm gonna offend a lot of people here, but I really feel like the Naniwa's, uh, the Naniwa brand should kill their Superstones with grits under a thousand. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, all the grits that are under a thousand are really slow, and so this one is extremely slow. Even for a 400 grit stone, uh, you're looking at twice, I would say close to twice of the amount of passes required to achieve a burr uh, compared to any of these other stones here. And so it's a great feeling stone. It feels really nice. It feels very luxurious. It has a very soft and supple feel as you're sharpening it. Uh, it loads up really fast, and that's the other thing about the super stones that I don't like. They load up extremely fast. Most of these stones here, as they load up and as you're sharpening, the load up actually kind of just falls off of the surface of the stone. Never a really big problem. But with the super stones, you know, the particulates and the abrasives are not releasing at the same rate that you would expect on a coarse stone. And so the load up happens. And then when you have lots of load up happens, your sharpening speed definitely diminishes. So the Kramer 400 is actually a really nice stone. It's made by Chosera or made by Naniwa in the Chosera lineup. And so I haven't, you know, I haven't sharpened this stone side by side with the Trocera 400, but I really liked this stone and I didn't really like the Trocera. So even though they are made under the same umbrella, this is actually a different formula than the Trocera 400 or the, or the Professional 400 is what you guys may see them at. Really nice stone. Uh, the only drawback to this one here is I'm not sure if you can buy this by itself. Uh, you might have to buy this in a set or in a kit. Um, but overall though, a very good performer. Uh, very good splash and go. It does absorb a little bit of water when you first use it, which is not a big problem. A lot of a lot of splash and goes actually do that. Overall, very good tactile feedback, very good hand feel. Again, the only negative thing here is it's very thin. And for me, if, especially if for those who are sharpening Yanagibas and you want to flatten your stone before every use, this stone here is going to limit that you know the lifespan of the stone because you have to flatten the stone so often. The best pick in the 320 grit is the Cerex 320. It's fast cutting, it's great, it's responsive, uh, tactile feedback is great. So overall, and also the price, it's actually one of the more reasonable price stones here, ironically. For a splash and go, I think that the Shaftin Glass 320 is the best stone in this category here. Overall performance is fantastic. Hand feel is awesome, feedback, amazing. Okay, so now we are moving up the grit ladder. 
to the 500 category, 500, 600 category. So now we're entering the low grit, uh, low sharpening grit range. So now we're entering the sharpening stones and there are a lot of stones here. I'm leaving the 1000 grit for the next round. So right here is everything from 500 grit to 1000 grit. Under a thousand, not a thousand, under a thousand. The Chosero 800 is one of the fastest cutting stones I have ever used. It definitely is one of the best feeling stones I have used. Tactile feedback is amazing. Um, as you guys can tell, I love this stone. If you guys watch any of my tutorials, all of my tutorials are done on this stone here. A fantastic stone. You really can't find anything wrong with it. The only negative thing I have to say about the Chorceras is they come with this dumb plastic base here. They do make the professional line now, which removes this base and added some cost to the stone. And the stone is actually thinner. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, they, they charge more for less. And it stays flat for a very long time. This exact stone here, I believe has had over 50 sharpenings and I have never flattened it. I still use it all the time. It's still a, a stone that I use for my personal knives. So for me, one of my favorite stones in this lineup here. The Shepton Glass 500 is a really nice stone. Definitely a stone that is really punching above its weight class. It really doesn't feel like a 500 grit stone. I think it feels a little bit finer. Uh, to me, it feels more like a 700 to an 800 grit stone. It is very luxurious feeling. It definitely has great feedback, great tactile feel. Again, the only negative thing I have to say about the sharpening glass stones overall is they're very thin. You only have five millimeters of uh, sharpening stone here. Minus that, it would, it was, it's probably equally as good as the Tracera 800 in terms of just overall performance. So this is a Superstone 800. To me, again, anything under a thousand for the Superstones, I would avoid. This is a really slow cutting stone and the load up is extremely fast. And so one of my, just as a reference for you, sharpening the Jihei on the Tracera it developed a burr in both sides, I think within two to three passes. So, I mean, that's just phenomenally fast for for that you know, sharpening a knife that was heat treated to 66. The 800, I believe, took seven passes on each side to develop a burr. So that is, <laughs> that's almost three times as slow uh, as the as the Tercera. And, you know, I mean, so it feels really nice though. It, it offers a really high polish. That's a, I guess that's a good thing for some people. If you wanted a stone and you didn't want to buy a polishing stone, the Superstone 800, actually gives you a polish that is probably equivalent to a 2000 grit stone, maybe even close to a 3000 grit stone. So that's the thing I don't love about the super stones. Whatever grit that they're rating their stones at, there is a lot more polishing agent than any other stones, uh, you know, named. And so they put a lot of polishing agents into their stones. And so this stone here, I mean, if you put, if you punched the 2500 grit stone on this thing, I would believe you. I would, yeah, that's a 2000 grit stone or over. Um, so I don't really find it appropriate for an 800 grit stone. Again, I'm not trying to knock on Naniwa. I love their brand. I love some of their stones that they make. But for the super stones, I really wish like they would actually keep them truer to grit and um, you know make them definitely closer to what their grit ratings should be. And take all the polishing agents out. At this grit level, you don't need polishing agents. So take them out. Uh, the Cirax 700, this is the only soaking stone in this lineup here. Um, I was I had high hopes for this stone, and you can see here the load up is extensive. It's probably just as bad as the Super Stone in terms of loading up. Uh, it's about a 15-20 minute soak time for this stone to perform optimally. It's fine, and uh, the reason why I don't love this stone is because of the Cirex 1000. The Cirex 1000 is one of my favorite stones, like period. And so I, when I got this stone here, I was hoping that it would be even a faster cutting stone than the Cirex 1000, but it's not. It's a little bit slow. The feedback is okay. The hand feel, it's nice. It's it's nice and uh, it's nice in the in the sense where it's very similar to the Superstone. They feel very luxurious as you're sharpening them. But to me, at this grit level, I want speed and I want feedback. And this stone here lacked speed and it lacked feedback. So these two perform very similarly, except this is a splash and go and this is a soaking stone. And I think this is probably a little bit less as well. But as a stone to start off your sharpening every single week. Um, or every other week, I would say that it's just a little bit too slow and the feedback is lacking for me. So now we have to go with the best pick. And to me, I mean, hands down, it's the Tracera. You can't beat the speed, the performance, the feedback. It's just a really, really good performing stone. Um, I think that in this category here, and even up to the 1000 grit range, there are very few stones that can compare to the overall performance of the Tracera. All right, so now we're entering the 1000 grit category, which is gonna be a lot of stones, I think. Okay, so here we go. Um, a lot of stones here. There's seven stones and uh, all very different. Uh, all, all offer very different things. Um, 
So let's start with the Butcher Stone here. This is the Whetstone Colliery 1000. It's true to grit. It's a really nice feeling stone. The wear is not too slow. It's a soaking stone. It's uh, again, 20 bucks or so. And so for a person starting off with sharpening, it's a great stone for that. Um, hand feel doesn't really feel great, but it definitely gives you decent feedback because it is very snappy and very crispy feeling. And uh, again, good 1000 stone. And the wear is actually it's slower than you would think for a budget stone. So overall, decent pick. The Shapton Glass 1000. Okay, so I did an episode of the Shopping Glass 1000 versus Tercera 1000. I really liked it. I think it's a great stone. It has a really nice feedback, has a really good tactile feel. I think the only thing that it's actually lacking overall is the speed is about 10% slower than a Tercera. But other than that, it's actually a really good performing stone. Uh, it offers really anything that you want on a stone. It doesn't load up that much. It does load up some, but load up actually doesn't seem to slow the stone down at all. Um, so overall, tactile feedback is amazing. Um, hand feel is really, really good. And the uh, speed is good. I wouldn't call it great, but it's definitely good um, or above average in terms of overall cutting speed. So overall, a very good stone. The Tercera 1000 is a very good performing stone overall. However, if I had to choose between the Tercera 1000 and the 800, I would definitely go with the 800. The 800 has everything over the 1000. Uh, speed, definitely it's a faster cutting stone, definitely feels better. It doesn't feel as soft as the 1000. The, the 1000 has a little bit more of a luxurious feel to it. And so it feels nice. I won't, I won't take that away from it. But the 800 to me has all of the qualities that I would want in a sharpening stone. So overall, you won't be disappointed with this stone. I don't think anyone who buys this stone would be disappointed with it. Uh, but me, you know, having the ability to sharpen stones by side by side, I see them a little bit differently. Uh, if you bought the stone by itself as a 1000 grit sharpening stone, you'd love it. It's a great cutting stone. The Cirex 1000 is the next stone here. So this stone here is a soaking stone. Definitely is a beefy stone. This is actually thicker and uh, wider than most stones in its class and I like that. I really appreciate that. To me, this is the best cutting stone like period. If you guys watched some of my old videos uh, in my Ricky Chan days, this stone here I put up against the Torcero 800 and it held its own in every category. Tactile feedback, hand feel, and speed. It was one pass slower than the Torcero 800. Now if you guys are wondering what a pass is, so let me just explain to you briefly what a pass is. So when I sharpen a knife, uh, this is the this willing chef knife here. If I'm when I'm sharpening a knife from tip to heel, when I'm going from here, and you know with the push and pull method, and I get to the heel. That's one pass. Go again. That's two passes, right? So most of the most of the stones would develop a pa uh, develop a burr on first side of the knife within three to four passes. The Cirex 1000 and the Tracera were consistently producing burrs within the, within the first two passes. And so to me, their cutting speeds were phenomenal. Uh, so this here is the Super Stone 1000. Now this here, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like this has been a, an episode of just like me knocking on Super Stones. This is a really nice feeling stone. This is actually starting to get to, uh, at the 1000s where I start saying, all right, well, if you want a really nice feeling stone and you are new to sharpening, the 1000 feels really nice. It does. The feedback is not bad. It's not great. It's good feedback. The speed still suffering a little bit here, uh, but it's not too bad. Um, I would say if you have a knife heat treated under a 61, maybe 62, it's okay. Definitely want to go under that. If you get, if you have any knives that are heat treated over a 61 or 61 and above, it's just going to be a little too slow for most likings. It does offer the ability to actually sharpen on and to learn on. So if you're new to sharpening and you really want to just take your time and not have a stone be too aggressive, the super stones are good for that. They load up again is a problem for me. I mean, this here was, uh, I haven't cleaned it from my last session and you can see this is after one sharpening, they load up really fast. As you can tell, I don't love this stone. I don't think it's a bad stone, just in terms in the light of all these other stones here, it definitely can do better. And even for its price, even for the category that they are kind of targeting the demographic, it's definitely lacking speed. That's one of the biggest things. And, um, and it's lacking feedback. The Shapton Pro 1000. Uh, this here is a stone that lots of people love. The Shapton Pro line is pretty much loved unanimously throughout the sharpening community, uh, especially the woodworkers. Woodworkers love them because they're very dense and they stay flat for a very long time. The Shapton Pro 1000. To me, uh, I've always said it and I'll keep 
I'll keep saying it. It feels more like a 700 bit stone, maybe maybe 800 at the at the best. Uh, so overall, though, I think it's a decent stone. Definitely good value for your money. Overall, I think it's a very good kind of stone. Uh, has decent feedback. The speed is actually quite good on the stone. Uh, it's almost as good as a Tracera in terms of overall speed. And that actually would make sense because it does feel coarser than a, than a 1000 grit stone. Because it is so dense, sometimes the density will kind of take away from that feedback that you were looking for on a stone. When a stone is too dense, you don't feel much. And when a stone is not dense enough, it gullies and dishes too fast. So there's a really fine balance in terms of finding a stone that wears just right and also gives you the right feedback. Um, so the feedback is good. I would say the feedback is good, speed is very good, and hand feel, okay. Uh, so now we have the Kramer 1000. Now the Kramer 1000 is, again, I've only used it a number a couple of times in some sharpenings. I do like it a lot. And again, I want to kind of refer it back to the Torcero 1000 because this is technically the same stone uh, according to some sources out there. They don't feel the same. The Glass stone, the tr let's just call this, uh, I don't want to call it Tracera glass, <laughs> it's not the Tracera glass, or the Kramer by willing glass stone, is a very nice feeling stone. Um, again, it's uh, the only negative thing I have to say about this stone is, is I'm not sure you can buy it outside of a kit. Uh, performance, very good. Feedback, really nice. Hand feel, very nice. Um, it's actually thicker than the Chapman glass stones, which is really nice. It's, I think it's like seven to maybe 10 millimeters of stone, which is uh, a huge, a huge thing, especially if you are going to do, uh, if you are the type that likes to flatten your stones um, before or after every use or every few uses, it's actually okay for that. Um, definitely won't wear the stone down that quickly, uh, as long as you are just very gentle with your flattening. So overall, a good stone. There is no stone here that offers the same performance, speed, feedback, um, hand feel, and price as the Spherex 1000. Uh, it definitely is a stone that you will love. It's a stone that I love. It's a stone that you definitely can grow with. It's not a stone that I feel like after six months of sharpening, you feel like it's not performing well enough anymore. It's a stone that you can always use. As a matter of fact, I've used it on the, the Jihei 66 Rockwell and it sharpened it and within three passes. So just a really fantastic cutting stone. If you want a best pick for splash and go, it's between the Tracera 1000 and the Shopping Glass. Um, so it's kind of a toss up. I would say speed would be Tracera. I would say hand, uh, hand feel would definitely be the Glass 1000. However, one other thing I want to put out there, if you are doing a lot of Yanagiba sharpening or sharpening of knives or tools that really require a flat plane, I would say go for either the Cerax or the Chosera because they are much thicker stones. When you have a thicker stone, you can flatten the stone as, long, you know, as many times as you need to and you will have plenty of life left. You know, that's really the drawback. Again, I've said this many times with the glass stones, they are amazing stones overall, but they are simply too thin for all uses. So for a chef knife, for a parry knife, they're great because you don't really need a flat plane. If you want speed, Chosera. If you want to do a lot of flattening, Chosera. If you want feedback and hand feel, these uh, Shapton Glass 1000. Okay, so this here, this category here is kind of a category that a lot of people ignore because you don't really see a lot of reviews on this category. Uh, at least when I was researching stones, this was a category that virtually no content was made for because you always hear people talk about the 1000 grit stones as a sharpening stone and then the polishing stone, you know, the 5000, 6000, and 8000, and so on uh, polishing stones. But this Category here is actually a very important category for me because it's a category that offers, at least in most cases, can offer the ability to sharpen your knives and actually give you the polish at the same time. And so for a lot of folks, if you like to simplify your life, you may just want to get something close to in this category and call it a day. And I'll explain to you as I go. So the first one we have here is the Kramer 3000. The Kramer 3000 was a stone that I had a lot of high hopes on because of the Tracera 3000. The Tracera 3000 is definitely one of my favorite stones of all time. And so when I got the Kramer or you know the Kramer 3000 glass stone, I was hoping that it would outperform the Tracera 3000. It doesn't. And that's part of my problem because I have so many stones here. I'm always comparing things. Uh, but let me just say if you bought the you know the Kramer 3000 by itself, it's a great stone. You will love it. It's fast cutting. It's got pretty good feedback and pretty good hand feel. And it's a really flat stone, so you don't have to worry about flattening the stone pretty much ever, unless, again, you're doing Yanagiba sharpening. But if you're doing Yanagiba sharpening, I would suggest you get a thicker stone, something that you can flatten you know, often before and after every use. Uh, 
but as a just as a stone by itself it's a very good performing stone again i've only used it twice so i don't really know it that well i will do a side by side comparison with a Tracera 3000 and give you a better picture of how it performs. This is a Shepton Glass 2000, 3000, and 4000. I've used them all. They actually are very good stones. The 2000 is a really nice stone. I really enjoy the way it feels. It feels a little too close to the 1000 in terms of overall performance, which is not a bad thing. It's a very luxurious feeling stone. Um, it has a decent polish. Again, polish is 2000 grit, and these are pretty close. These are actually uh, Shepton Glass stones. Once you move into the high grit ratings, they actually are very, very close to what they're that what they're stated ratings are uh, in the lower ratings kind of another question but these feel really nice and so between the 2000 3000 4000 it's really up to you i would say the 4000 is kind of really in an oddball category it doesn't really offer you the speed of a 2000 or 3000 grit stone and it doesn't offer you the polish of a 5000 or 6000 grit stone it's a very good stone though however again if you're looking to get a three you know a 4000 grit stone you're, you're really literally in the middle of what you would consider a polishing stone and a sharpening stone. You know, so uh, it's these two, these two great ratings here are kind of an oddball ratings, but they are still decent in terms of what they offer. The 3000 I really like. The 3000 really comes close to overall performance as the Tracera 3000. It has really good feedback. Uh, it has, it's a little bit softer feeling than the Tracera. And the speed definitely it's about 10 to maybe 20% slower than the Tracera. During sharpening, I found that, especially knives in the 62 to 66 category, I had to do an extra pass to get the same burr development as the Tracera. That's not really a problem though. I mean, again, one pass is 30 seconds to maybe a minute, no, 30 seconds, no more, than, no more than 30 seconds. So overall, these two stones I really enjoy. The 4000, again, it has a very good performance overall. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the overall performance of the 4000. It just sits too close to a 5000 or 6000 category and too close to a 1000, 3000 or, you know, 2000, 3000. So it really is the oddball in this in this lineup here. I don't really see a real use of the 4000 unless you are planning to go to an 8000, you know, and this is kind of your stepping stone in between. So if you want to go 1000, 4000, 8000, or 1,000, 4,000, 10,000, that makes a lot of sense because then the 4,000 grit stones cost a little less than the 5,000, 6,000 stones because they don't have the same polishing agents, but they are allowing you to kind of step up to the 10,000 or 8,000 grit. So to me, if you are looking to get a complete set of shotgun glass stones and you want to get a really good polishing stone, then the 4,000 stone will make sense. But as an end stone, as a stone that you stop with, you know, uh, I would say it still doesn't make, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the 3000 Superstone is a really nice polishing stone. So let's talk about feedback. Feedback is almost lacking. It's lacking on the stone. You definitely don't feel the feedback like at all. It's really soft feeling. It's not a soft stone per se, but it's very soft feeling. It's very luxurious feeling is what I can uh, kind of how I put it. The polish on the 3000 is phenomenal. This polish is more like a 6000 grit stone. I mean, it is a close to mirror polish, and which is really rare for a 3000 grit stone. I don't think any other 3000 grit stone actually offers a polish the way the Super Stones do. So if you want a low cost or medium, a relatively low cost stone that gives you a really high polish, then the 3000 makes sense. Like for example, let's say you wanna buy an 8000 grit stone because you want a mirror polish. Well, you're actually better off buying a $50, $60, Superstone, because the polish on this thing is phenomenal. It it will give you a polish of what you would find on a six thousand or eight thousand grit stone. Uh, so that's what I don't like about these superstones is their grit ratings. Unless you've actually used them, you really don't know what they are, um, what they really are. And uh, you know, so overall, again, the load up is really fast in the stone, which I don't like. The tactile feel is really nice, and the feedback is lacking completely. But uh, at this range of stone, the feedback is probably not the most important thing that you're looking for. So overall though, I mean, it's a nice stone. Uh, you ha It has to check off the boxes that you want for this stone to actually work for you. Uh, now we're at the Shafton Pro 2000. The uh, Shafton Pro 2000 is a really nice stone. I will have to say it's much better than the 1000 grit stone. And uh, it's definitely probably one of the best cutting stones for Shopping Pro lineup. It's fairly fast, I would say, in terms of overall speed. It's probably close to Tracera, maybe 10% slower, if that. Um, so very good in terms of overall speed. Hand feel is really nice. It does have the same, I mean, it is very dense and very hard, 
but it just feels so much better than the than the two uh, than the Shopton 1000 range. It's a really good cutting stone. Overall, I think that anyone who buys a stone is going to be very happy with it. It cuts really well. It stays very flat. It gives you excellent feedback and it gives you excellent hand feel as well. And that's why I really like the stone. The hand feel on the stone is different than what you would see on the Shopton 1000. And so this is a proper, to me, a really proper sharpening stone. Again, it's a 2000 grit stone. It's kind of sitting like, it's kind of in that category of low polishing, high sharpening. And so to me, the 2000 in this, on this very stone actually does make a lot of sense. So I really like the Shopton Pro 2000 grit stone. Uh, next we have the Tresero 3000. Uh, if you guys have seen my channel, have been with my channel for some time, you would know that this is my favorite stone like of all time. Uh, it, it's, it's a stone that you can sharpen your knives with. It's a stone that can polish your knives with. I mean, it can do it all. And it is also very fast. In terms of overall speed, it is almost as fast as the Tresero 800. Um, it does give you a pretty true to uh, rating polish. It's, it is between a 3000 4000 grit rating which is really nice. And um, yeah, so I mean, there is nothing bad with the stone. Again, I hate the bases that they come with. They're just annoying, <laughs> um, but I I respect that. Their company can do what they want. Um, there is the new Professional 3000. It's the exact same stone, same formula, um, slightly thinner than the Chosera 3000. But if you wanted one stone, you know, people always ask me if there was one stone that I would want to use for the rest of my life. I would say right now, currently, is the Torsera 3000. Uh, I really love this stone. It's a really fantastic stone. Uh, feedback is second to none. Hand feel is second to none. And the wear and, and the wear in the stone is very slow. It's very slow to wear, which is also really what you don't see a whole lot of. A lot of stones that are very slow to wear you lose feedback, but somehow this stone was able to do it. It gives you excellent feedback, but also slow to wear. And it's also very flat. This stone here is also has about uh, I would say almost, yeah, probably as much, maybe close to as much, about four dozen sharpenings on it. I've never flattened it, and it's just a really, really good performing stone. Again, definitely my pick of the year. For the best budget stone in this category, is definitely the Shopton Pro 2000. Um, you know, price and performance, it is hands down the best stone here. It offers you the same speed as the Shopton Glass Stones, and uh, it offers you kind of the same flatness as well. It's obviously not as dense as the Shopton glass stone, so the wear is going to be a little bit faster. But you're probably looking at 20% to 30% faster wear on the Shopton Pro stones. But that's really not a problem though, because considering the price of the stone, it's I think I've seen them for between 40 and 50 bucks, maybe a few dollars more. Um, so very aggressively priced for a 2000 grit stone. Okay, so now we are entering the 5000 to uh, 5000 to 6000 category. All right, so here we go. This is your 5,000 to 6,000 category. And depending on who you talk to, this is what you consider a medium polishing stone. Some people say that uh, anything over 6,000 would be your fine polishing, and then anything over 10,000 would be your ultra fine polishing. So to me, this is what I consider a medium polishing category, okay? So we have the Rika 5,000, the Superstone 5,000, the Tracera 5,000, the Shopton Pro 5,000, the Kramer 5000 and the Shopton Glass 6000. And we have a few other stones over here. Okay, so let's just start with the Rika 5000. Now, this is my original Rika 5000. This stone I still use all of the time. I love this stone. It's a fantastic soaking stone. This is the same stone, that it's a base version of the stone, which I'm not a huge fan of the base because this is a soaking stone. And this stone here, probably, again, the best performing soaking stone is this stone right here. Is fast cutting, it, in terms of speed, is probably just as fast as the Tracera 3000, which is phenomenal. And it's got a really excellent feedback. It's got an excellent hand feel. Definitely doesn't feel soft at all. A lot of soaking stones in this grit rating will feel a little bit soft and dampened as you're sharpening it. Not this one here. This one here is, it's amazing. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Now this is where I see super stones really starting to shine. Okay, in this great, this grit rating here. The 3000 is decent, um, but the 5000 polish is very, very nice. It's more like an 8000 grit polish. And that's the thing, it still drives me crazy, even though I enjoy the fact that they give you a really high polishing stone. I don't enjoy the fact that unless you actually know that, uh, man, battery is dead. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, and the uh, Arashiyama 6000, I forgot that there. Okay, so back to the 5000. 
Um, so again, I appreciate the fact that they give you a really high polishing stone. The load up is still a problem in the stone. Uh, it's, they still load up substantially. Speed, not a big problem at all because at this grit level, you're not thinking about speed. So speed, it's not great, but it's not a problem. Um, hand feel, it's really nice. It feels very luxurious. Uh, feedback, it's actually a little bit better than the 3000. I actually enjoy the way that this feels better. Uh, it does give you a little bit more tactile feedback than the 3000 grit stone. So overall, it's actually a decent performing stone. This is one I would say, if you want a super stone, this is where you should start at. You should avoid everything below this. If you really wanted to, maybe the 3000 is an okay stone, but I would definitely avoid everything below uh, 1000 and below because they just don't do anything for you. They're much better stones for the same price, but at the 5000 grit level, you are starting to see the super stones shine a little bit better or a little bit brighter. Uh, the Trocero 5000. Okay, so uh, in my all, in my honesty, I was really hoping that this would be my favorite pick because I love the Trocero 3000. And I was thinking, man, maybe the 5000 would be even that much better, but just a higher polish. Uh, not so. <laughs> so uh, first off, it's actually, um, it's actually a relatively soft feeling stone. This actually feels kind of close to a Superstone 5000, which is really surprising to me. I was hoping that it would have the same snappiness and the same feedback as the Trocero 3000. It doesn't. Um, it, it also feels a little bit grippy and sticky. I know that's kind of weird sounding, but because I think that the density of this, uh, the particulates and the abrasions are so tight on the Trocero stones, or at least on the Trocero 5000, that it's not giving off enough abrasives as you are polishing. The look of the polishing is not bad. It's actually giving you pretty close to a mirror polish, which is nice, but getting there is just not fun. You know, to me, it just doesn't quite live up to the Trocero lineup. Um, all of the Troceros below this, except the 400, are great stones. The, the 800, the 1000, 3000 are all fantastic. The 5000, though, just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't have that same feedback that I was looking for. Overall, it's an okay stone. Definitely is way too much money for what they are offering. Definitely not something that lives up to the Trocero name. Okay, so this is the Shatman Pro 5000. Now, if you guys watched my original video of this uh, on Ricky Tran, you guys will know that I didn't love this stone. And the main reason because it lacked feedback. I felt like the knife was kind of always floating on the surface and never really felt like I knew what the knife was doing. And I still feel that way. <laughs> it's a decent stone. It's just not great. For the price, it's not bad. Um, it stays very flat, so that's a good thing. It's also a true splash and go, so that's also a good thing. You know, I find that people, people like in the woodworking world, are loving the stone because in, in the woodworking world, you want something that's very, you know, very affordable and that just gets the job done. For us in the knife world, we are a little bit more vain and we want things like feedback and hand feel. <laughs> Woodworkers don't care about those things. At least I don't think so. At least not according to some of the subscribers that I have. They love the stone, and so for me. You know, from a knife sharpening standpoint, it does the job well. It gives you a really nice close to mirror polish and it uh, stays flat for a very long time. The load up really isn't a big problem. It does load up, but very minor. I mean, we say load up just as little as the Trocera, so not a big deal at all. Uh, so it does have some really good points to it in terms of an overall stone. But the best qualities about this stone here is the price and the, the actual finished product. Your knife will become very close to mirror polish and just getting there is just not a lot of fun. Uh, you don't really know what the knife is doing. So if you are new to sharpening, you will lack the, you know, it's the, the sensation that you're getting on the stone. It's just kind of hard to detect what your edge is actually doing. So um, other than that though, the finished product is actually quite good. The Kramer 5000 to me was a huge surprise. It definitely was a stone that I was actually not expecting to do as well as it did or to perform as well as it did because of the Trocero 3000. You know, I held the Trocero 3000 as the standard. And so the Kramer 3000 let me down, right? I was like, man, the, the Kramer 3000 doesn't feel the same as the Trocero 3000. So what do I do with the Kramer 5000? The 5000 is a fantastic performer and it blew the Kramer 3000 away. And so the reason, and part of the reason why I don't love the Kramer 3000 is because of the Kramer 5000. It is that good of a stone. This here is what the Trocero 5000 should really feel like, <laughs> but they don't feel the same. At least not in my mind. Um, they may be the same stone, but just different color. Uh, I have no idea. But to me, this is a really good feeling stone. The feedback is great. The hand feel is great. Uh, it's very dense of a stone, but you definitely know what the knife is doing. I never felt like I was lost uh, or the knife was kind of just doing something I didn't really understand. Um, every, every inch the knife traveled, I knew what the knife was doing. 
And the speed, again, speed is not a thing that you really measure in this category here. So speed was something I didn't try to even measure. Um, but the overall tactile feedback and the hand feel was fantastic on the 5,000 stone. So I really love it. Uh, the only, again, the only drawback that I can see with this stone here possibly is that it's not sold outside of a kit. But as a stone by itself, it's a fantastic 5,000 performing stone. So the 6,000, um, I got to use this um, maybe three or four times this year, and it is a really nice stone. Uh, I'm pretty sure I never flattened the stone. I used it to sharpen a Shun Yanagaba and a couple other Yanagabas here, the Tojijiro. And overall, I really like this stone here. Again, the only thing that I found, and I didn't really have to discover this, but over time when you're sharpening more Yanagabas and you really make, need to make sure that your stones are flat, this stone here being so thin as it is, is really going to suffer in the long run when you are doing a lot of flattening. And that's really the only drawback I see. It's just a well-performing stone. It does everything that you expect a good Shepton glass stone to do. Uh, it cuts really well. It has a really great feedback. It's got great hand feel to it. And so it kind of like doesn't really uh, stand out of the crowd here. The Yama 6000 is the last stone here. And this was one of my very first polishing stones that I purchased. I actually, this is like my third copy. First two copies that I had, one was was given in a giveaway. I gave one away and one was actually purchased by a, a friend of mine <laughs> who borrowed the stone and never gave it back. So um, so this is my third Arashiyama 6000 here. It's a really good stone. It's made by a company, I believe it's called Imanishi and they make Bester, which is also a really great line of stones. Um, really quick side note. I had the Masamoto 8000 here uh, earlier last year. And the Masamoto 8000 was a white stone. They felt the same. They had the same Nagura stone that was included, that the same base, they, they were the exact same size. So my suspicion was the Masamoto was actually this, uh, was the Arashiyama 8000 rebranded and recolored. They felt exactly the same, me using them side by side. There was no difference in terms of polishing finish um, or even how they feel. Needless to say, it's a good performing stone. It's uh, feedback is okay, it's not as, crispy as, I, as what I would like it, but definitely very luxurious feeling. The hand feel is excellent on the stone. And uh, you know, overall, it's a, very good, it's a very good stone overall. And also one of the biggest things for this stone is the price. Um, you will find them for as low as $48. I've seen them on Amazon. And typically they, they fluctuate around the mid 50s. So a really well-priced stone for this grit rating, grit level. Um, I like this stone a lot. It's so I, you know, even though I don't use it very often right now because I have so many other things that I am using, including my straps, it's still a stone that I like to keep around because it's a very good performing stone. If you wanted a soaking polishing stone, the hands down the best stone you can buy is the Rika 5000. It's fast cutting, the feedback is amazing, the, and the hand feel is awesome. So there is no better stone, no better soaking stone in this grit rating that you can buy than the Rika 5000. The Splash and Go categories. Oh, so the best Splash and Go for me in this category is the Kramer and the Shapton. But if I had to pick between the one of them, I would pick the Kramer because the Kramer is giving me the polish that I want, but it also does it a little bit faster and it also gives me a little bit better feedback than the Shapton glass. So the Kramer 5000 is a pick of this bunch if you wanted a Splash and Go. Rika, Soaking, Kramer, Splash and Go. Okay, I think we have one more category to go through here, and it's the 6,000, or is it over 6,000 to 8,000? So I think it's the 8,000 to 10,000 category. So I don't have many stones here. Uh, I have a few, but not many. Okay, so let's start with uh, left and right. We'll go this way. Okay, so this is the Kitsuyama 8,000, and it's a really nice stone. It's a stone that um, I have used maybe four or five times this year. So in terms of overall tactile feedback and feel, it feels extremely similar to the Arashiyama 6000. It may be slightly harder, I really can't say, unless I sharpen them side by side. And so I will do a video of them side by side and really give you a better understanding of these stones, but they feel really similar. They come with the same Nagara, with the same packaging. <laughs> and they also have the same uh, branding here on both sides. You can't see, I don't know if you can see that. Even their branding, that the stamp here, um, these are the same characters. Um, so I'm guessing it's made by the same company. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if these are like 99% the same, except color, but they feel extremely similar when I use them. Again, I didn't use them side by side, so I can't confirm that, but it feels really nice. I like this stone a lot. Uh, the This is the mm, Superstone 8000. Uh, I've used it twice this year. It feels nice, um, again, 
this is again this is where superstones really shine is they offer you a lot of uh, polishing agents for your money and so if you want a really high gloss polish and you didn't want to spend over let's say 70 80 bucks this would be a good stone for that um again it's it lacks feedback just like any other superstone but again not a big deal S speed i didn't really get to test speed at all and speed is not something you test in this category um, so overall though it's a nice stone the snow white this is an interesting stone because this is a really old formula this is a stone that's been around forever and everyone knows of the snow white uh naniwa do i like it um i do like it as a stone it is a really good performing stone when i first used it though it i thought it was a soaking stone because it was taking in quite a bit of water for an 8000 grit stone but i have found that after using it for just a couple times that by not soaking it and just throwing water onto the surface it actually works quite well between this and the Superstone 8000, they feel really similar. I would say that the 8000 probably has a slightly more refined, maybe a slightly more refined uh, formula. The reason being is I see that this one here feels a little sticky at times. And again, probably because it's so dense and the, per and the, art and the uh, polishing agents are very small, it seemed to grip onto the knife a little bit. So it just felt a little sticky at some points. That's not a big deal after you sharpen it for a while and the stone has some wear in it, but as a brand new stone, it just felt a little sticky. Overall, I really like the way the stone feels from pure performance. It's a very good stone, but uh, I think it's just a little bit pricey for people looking for a good polishing stone overall. The Shopton Glass um, 8000, um, I actually just cleaned, um, I did a cleaning just like yesterday, and um, you guys probably see the video in a few days after this one. Um, I did a cleaning of all my Shopping Glass stones and my Kramer stones. Uh, I'm going to do some shooting with them, so I wanted them clean. So this is brand new looking, but it's not. You can see the system marks on it. Um, it's a really nice stone. It's a, again, the you know, the Shopping Glass stones are really interesting because they have so many stones. They pretty much have every stone in every grit level. You have, uh, I think there's, I think they may be only missing like a 7,000 grit and 9,000 grit, but they have like uh, 120, 320, 500, uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. So they have pretty much every single grit in the lineup. And so the 8,000 is kind of in that same realm, you know, because you can have the 10,000 grit stone. And so why buy the 8,000 when you can have the 10,000? Or why stop at 8,000? And that's really interesting to me why they would do that. Uh, I think that for people who really want a true 8,000 grit stone, that's great. But then for if you want a polishing stone, and you're offering an 8,000 and a 10,000 grit, you are kind of confusing people. And so that's why I don't really love the fact that they offer so many stones and so many grits across the grit range. But as a performing stone, it's a very good performing stone. It's, uh, you know, it gives you a slightly better polish than the 6,000. Um, hardly noticeable though. I mean, you will notice a slight difference between a 6,000 and 10,000, but from a 6,000, 8,000, it's like so minor. And so that's why I feel like this stone kind of is out of place um, just as, as a stone by itself, considering the price and the performance, you are much better off than some of the other stones that are available in this lineup here. Um, but overall though, you get a really nice stone. I love their stones. I mean, I love the fact that they give you tempered glass that's frosted and also a stone that is very dense and very hard, but while giving you uh, pretty good feedback. Okay, so the Stefan Pro 8000. I've only used this stone once this year and I can tell you that it's a pretty good stone. I mean, the polishing is really nice. It's actually... Uh, the feedback is actually even better than the 5000 which you know on the 5000 grit stone the polishing was nice but it lacked feedback i found that the 8000 gives you decent feedback and good tactile feel with a good polish so that's really the, the main benefit of the 8000 grit stone and also in terms of price this is i think the cheapest stone in this lineup here so definitely a plus for those who just want a really high polish and don't want to spend a lot of money so overall very good stone now we're heading into the 10000 category now the 10,000 category, again, this is the 10,000 Shopton Glass Stone. It's a really good stone. If you're looking to get a polishing stone between 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, I would say get the 10,000 grit stone. You don't need to go from 1,000, 4,000 to 10,000 or 1,000, 6,000, 10,000. You can go straight from the 1,000 to 10,000. So in case you guys are wondering. Um, and it's a really nice stone. The polish is really nice. The feedback is really nice. I mean, you know, as you go up the grit ratings, you start feeling the stone less and less. But Shopton, because of this is a really dense synthetic stone, they've been able to give you a really good feedback and really good tactile feel on a really high grit level stone, which I really appreciate. So for a 10,000 grit stone, this is a fantastic stone. Uh, very luxurious feeling, definitely very good feedback and really good hand feel. 
and the fact that out of the box it's perfectly flat it's a really good plus for that. All right, this one here is the Gokumyo, Gokumyo 10,000. I've used this stone once. Um, it's really nice, <laughs> really, really nice. And so, interestingly, it has a really good density, okay? So, uh, you know, Gokumyo is the Suhiro's uh, premium grade stones. They only, there's only a few dealers in the world that carry them, and they are really pricey though. That's really the biggest negative on these stones. They do cost over $200 per stone, but you are getting a really nice stone. The polish is amazing. It's definitely a true 10,000 grit polish. Feedback is amazing. Hand feel, amazing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a stone other than the fact that it does cost a lot of money. And, uh, you know, so that's really the biggest negative in the stone. Um, and the other thing was, like, it comes in a massive box. The max, the box is like three times the size of the stone. So I was hoping to have these big, big stones, um, you know, when I opened the box up, but the stones are yeah, average size stones. <laughs> but the box is massive and so when you guys see the unboxing you guys will understand um yeah so i mean this is a really good stone i mean i really don't have anything negative to say about the gomkumyo 10,000 only the fact that it does cost a lot of you know a little bit more money than ideal but from a performance perspective it's really really good but these are all splash and go so i really can't say best splash and go best soaking stone let me give you my best pick if you just want a good performance stone for your money. So the best performance stone for your money in terms of just raw performance to the dollar is the Kitayama 8000. It's by far, I think, well, it's this and the Shepton Pro are the pretty much the same. They're very close in price. Sometimes you can find them, depending on when you buy them in the season, they will fluctuate in price, obviously. Um, that's why I don't talk about price too often because you never know who's selling them or where you can buy them from. The reason I chose the Kitayama over the Shepton Pro is the fact that this one here, it's much thicker. It's twice as thick as the Shapin Pro. And also, what that makes, uh, why that's important is because people who are sharpening things like Yanaga Buzz and Day Buzz that need a flat plane, you can flatten this, you know, a hundred times, maybe even more than that, and still have a stone to work with. The Shapin Pro, it has a really good performance uh, to price ratio relative to the Kitayama. The Kitayama is still a better stone because of the fact that you can, you can flatten the stone a ton, a lot more times than the Shapin Pro. In terms of raw performance, if you wanted two stones, if you want a stone that just gave you awesome performance, regardless of price, I would say it's between the Gokumyo 10,000 and the Shapin Glass 10,000. These two stones here, if you took price out of the equation, they are amazing stones. They will give you really good feedback. They give you better feedback than any of these stones here and better tactile feel than any of these stones here. And so for me, these two stones are the best in terms of just raw performance, uh, not taking money into consideration. So kind of my conclusion thoughts about this video and about stones in general is always buy what you can afford. Never listen to me. Don't take my advice as the only advice you should take when it comes to buying stones. I am as biased as, well, I would say I'm as biased as anybody else, but I do have my biases when it comes to sharpening stones. And so I do look for things that people may not look for in certain things. And so, you know, so I really appreciate you guys, you know, taking my word and my advice uh, as my buying advice. But please uh, do your best and do your research and, you know, see what other people are saying. Ask your friends who are into knives and into whetstones as well. So don't just don't take my word for it. Oh, and a quick note, people always ask me about cleaning their stones with Nagaras. And so let me give you my best pick for sharpening accessories. Um, these are the Suhiro stones. So these stones are made by Suhiro. They're nice. They're great Nagaras. There's the 1,000, 3,000, 5,000. I would say avoid the 3,000. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The, it just doesn't come off very well and it doesn't um, clean your stones all that well. The 1,000 does a lot better job and the 5,000 is really nice if you want to, to add a polishing agent to your stone. If, you're, if your wet stone is not producing any sort of slur and you wanted something to give you better feedback, Throw the 5,000 Nagara on it, it actually will improve the feedback a little bit. Um, the 1,000, uh, it's kind of a, uh, you can use it as a cleaner stone. I really, I really wouldn't really bother, honestly. Um, <clears throat> where is it? Oh, um, this is what I use personally for my cleaning. I use a rust eraser by Sabatori or Sabatoru. Uh, it's linked on Amazon. It's linked in the video description. Everything here will be linked in the video description, by the way. And I will leave uh, kind of a uh, summary of everything that I've talked about in this video. But between these two, this one here is, I think you buy a pair of these for 14, 13, 14 bucks. Um, or you can buy one of these for 15, 20 dollars. Get one of these. These will last you, a, I would say, 100 times longer than this. 
Um, I've used this once, just a few days ago in the cleaning. You see that the corner's already worn down on after one or, one or two cleanings. This one here has been used for over a year and you can see that the size is pretty much 99% of what the original size was. And so this is much more better. This is the medium one. This is actually the one with the white writing. There's also one with the red handwriting. Get, get the one with the, with the white stamp. It cleans every stone. Um, I will release a video, hopefully in the next few days, of me cleaning a bunch of stones. And you'll see that this stone here, or this rusted racer here, was cleaning stones from 120 grit all the way up to 10,000 grit. And so it has the widest range of use available. It's also, it's also a rusty racer, so you can race rust off of your knives and uh, your, you know, your, your atomic plates if you had rust on, develop on your plates or something like that. So I use these all the time. I use them extensively and so that's why i highly endorse or highly recommend you buy these over a nagara especially a 1000 grit nagara which doesn't make any sense and this is a dressing stone or aka slash uh, or aka cleaning stone by naniwa this is the best cleaning stone so rather than buying a 1000 suhiro stone get the naniwa stone it actually costs less money i think it's i think it costs between i would say 15 20 bucks well, it's about the same money. Uh, I, I've seen these for as high as 40 bucks, kind of expensive. But um, usually they're between 20 bucks on Amazon, 15, 20 bucks. And these have always been 15, 20 bucks, depending on where you buy from. Um, these are really nice. These are what I would prefer if you wanted a stone to clean a lower grit stone with, uh, if you really needed a cleaning stone. Um, yeah, so these are definitely recommended by me. I like these a lot. But the best cleaning solution you can get for your stones is a rust eraser, hands down. I discovered it when I was just playing around one day, like uh, last summer when I was just goofing around. I discovered that these did a really good job cleaning whetstones with. And uh, since then, everyone who I've recommended these to have loved them. And so I think I'm the first person that pioneered cleaning your whetstones with a rust eraser. So I will, I will happily take credit for that. Um, yeah, so that is it. I will leave a link in the video description for all of these stones here. I won't leave a link for every one of them, <laughs> but I will leave a link to all the top picks and I'll make a list for you guys and I'll give you guys my highlights and my, uh, my summaries of each stone of my top picks and why I chose it. That'll make it easier for you to, instead of retaining all the information in this video, just go to that list and uh, break it down and then, you know, um, have fun shopping if you guys want to buy any of these stones. Yeah, and so for 2018, I will have, uh, these stones will all make a comeback in 2018. You'll see them all again. I have a dozen here from Suhiro that I haven't opened yet, but I have another dozen stones from another vendor that is sending some stuff here that is really exciting. So I'm really excited for it. The 2018 is going to be a great year. It's going to have, a, I'm going to do a lot more focus. I'm going to try to focus a lot more on whetstones. Uh, if you guys want to see certain whetstones, go head to head. Let me know what they are. I will definitely make a list, a running list of all the stones that people want to see compete one against another. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun in 2018 when it comes to whetstones because I love whetstones. That was what my channel was started with. And because of my whetstones, my channel kind of got big, right? <laughs> so uh, I can't leave my whetstones behind. I love them. And for those who really just want a stone that will work and you don't want to spend any money, go for a brick. Yes, a brick. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen my video, of me sharpening a bunch of knives on these on these on this brick here i'll post them in the links uh in the video description below and if i don't post them just leave a comment hey dude like leave your video link to the brick video like you know they're kind of fun to watch but um i have successfully sharpened i think three knives at this point on this brick and they are i would say they're razor sharp knives and um you know so it's a lot of fun so try you know try sharpening on a brick if you don't want to spend any money on a whetstone Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I, um, you know, I don't want to ruin your Christmas shopping. You guys don't have to add this to your Christmas shopping list. You know, just wait till next year <laughs> when you recover some money and pick up some new whetstones. But Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for helping me grow my channel to where it is today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. And I'm probably, this is my last, this is officially my last review of 2018. If, or 2017 if you guys see other videos it might be just a couple unboxings that i'm just bringing through time and uh, just putting some videos out i probably will answer uh, i'll probably put up another video too of just q and a's of questions that you guys ask me every single week but uh, this is the last review session my last that's it this is it no more okay i need some rest <laughs> uh so you guys enjoy the christmas holiday and i'll catch you guys in the next video oh my poor rika my poor rika <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you lend a stone to a friend. Mm -hmm.
yeah this is what happens. <laughs> as nice as it is for my supporters to support me on a monthly basis on Patreon, I just feel really bad at asking for money and not giving anything in return. Um, I'm not the type that likes to ask for financial support from anybody. And so uh, I wanna thank all of my patrons for supporting me these last, I don't know how long I've had it up, six months or so. Um, thank you for being there for me. And so every one of my supporters who are currently active on Patreon are gonna get a leather strop sent to them. So two reasons why I made these is one, because I love stropping and I'm making them for myself, for my personal use. And also for those who wanna support my channel, instead of you going onto a Patreon, just pick up a strop. It's something that I can give back to you guys that you can use instead of just you know money that goes into an account and you never see uh, anything afterwards. And one of the biggest goal for me is to come up with product um, that is usable not just for me but for my viewers. Um, there are a lot of things that I wish I could change about the knife world and lots of things that I, I really want done differently and this is one of them. Putting out really high quality straps at a much more affordable price than what I've been seeing on eBay and on Amazon. So these will all be available on my Etsy page which I, which I will leave linked in the video's description. So a number of you guys have reached out and asked me if I can get a discount code for Dow Strong products. Now I have to be honest, I have never thought about that and uh, it's, you know, all the other knives that I have reviewed on my channel have offered some code of some sort and it just never occurred to me to ask Dow Strong for a discount code for my subscribers. And so I reached out to them recently and I asked them if I can get a code for my subscribers and my viewers. And they said yes. So I will leave a code in the description of the video. It basically is a code that you can apply to all Dowsroom products and it's umbrella a code. So meaning you can apply it to any Dowsroom product and you don't have to buy multiple knives. You can just buy one knife and have it applied. So, you know, hopefully you guys are happy with that. It's a pretty good code. I was told that the discount is the largest that they offer. I asked them to please make sure that the code is a good discount that they really can't find anywhere else outside of my channel. Um, not that I'm sponsored by them or anything, but I just wanted to make something special and give something special to my subscribers and my viewers. And so they said, yeah, it's going to be a pretty good, uh, good code. And I think that my subscribers will be pretty happy with it. Uh, so good luck. Again, the code is in the description. I think it's called perfect. I'll leave the exact spelling of it in the description and you guys can just check it out and see if it actually works.